Hello, hello, welcome back to online learning. Good morning, everybody. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. Welcome back to online learning. I hope you all have been enjoying this week. I'm so excited because tomorrow means it's Zoom day. Today we are working with Miss Walton. So please, please, please be sure to be getting on that site. And our club is at two. We are continuing talking about amphibians, so please um, log on to Imagine Math for a little while today while you enjoy the rest of your day. And we're going to go ahead and begin. So today we are going to be talking about the differences between frogs and toads. So one of the biggest things that I hear is, especially from myself, because I ask myself all the time, is what makes them so different. Frogs and toads look really similar. So what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about the differences and why they aren't considered the same animal. So I have a picture here of both of them because we're going to be reading two books today. Now the first one is going to be focused only on frogs. The second one is going to be focused only on toads. So I want you to listen to some things that they might have that is the same and some things that they might have that are completely different from the other one, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the frog book. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with what are frogs? Frogs are animals with strong back legs. Their legs help them jump. So we know frogs, they love jumping, they love hopping, leaping, uh, that's one of the things that makes them so special um, as an amphibian is the fact that they have the ability to jump using their legs. Most frogs are green, brown, or gray. Many frogs have spots or stripes. Okay, so we can see a couple of pictures here of different types of frogs. So this one is green, and then we have one down here that's a little bit brown kind of like a gold color. And then we have one that has spots on the back, on their back. Frogs use the color of their skin to hide, but what's the word that we use? You did it last week. Camouflage. So they use their color of their skin to camouflage. They blend in with leaves, grass, and branches. So we kind of got to see one of them actually doing using camouflage um, in last week's activity. So we're able to see how they use this to hide from bigger animals that might want to eat them. Most frogs start out as tadpoles. They have tails like fish and they swim in water. So you can kind of see how this one, this is like a baby frog. It has legs, it's starting to grow its legs, but one of the biggest things that you see on it is the tail. This is what's helping it swim underwater. Tadpoles grow and change into frogs. And what was that big word that we used at the beginning of the week for change? Does anybody remember it? metamorphosis. It's a really big word that simply means change. Their tails go away and they hop on land. So you can kind of start seeing how their tail is kind of becoming more strong. It's not like a fin anymore because in the previous picture it kind of looks like the, the fish, the fins that the fish have. But now it's starting to look more like a tail, like a lizard kind of tail but their legs and their hands are getting much more stronger. Most frogs need to stay wet. They live near ponds, rivers, or swamps. Okay, so this is one of the biggest thing about frogs that they're, since their skin is moist and soft, it needs the water to keep it like that because if it starts drying out, it starts losing um, the, the wetness of the skin. Some frogs have sticky pads on their toes. What do you think these sticky pads can help them do without reading it? Okay, well, we'll read it. It says, these help frogs climb trees and hang onto plants. 
So like we saw the frog that was trying to hide from its predators, right? So this is an easy way for them to hold on to the branch or hold on to the tree that they're on without falling or making any noise that will alert the predators that that's where they're at. Most frogs eat insects. They use their tongues to catch insects. So this is actually something really interesting that I find, uh, especially talking about frogs, is that when I imagine a frog or when I think or when somebody think, mentions a frog, I always think of a frog eating a fly for some reason, taking their tongue out, catching the fly and eating it. And we can see this is one of the examples, but frogs eat almost all kinds of insects. So we, this looks like a butterfly right there, a bee, a dragonfly, and the fly. Frogs croak, peep, and make other sounds. Frogs can make a lot of noises. So croak is the normal sound that we think of when we think of frogs. What is the sound that you think of when you think of frogs? I'll tell you mine after you do yours. My sound is always ribbit, 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 but they make their own special kind of sound. Alrighty. So now that we've covered some things about frogs, I want you to think of those things as we are reading about toads. So now that we're going to read about toads, think of the things that I'm telling you about toads. Think back for what we talked about frogs. So toads are amphibians with short legs and plump bodies. They have dry skin with warts. So plump means that they're a little bit more bigger, more built. Um, they have stronger bones in them. Um, so it, it makes them look a little bit thicker. Toads eat insects, spiders, and worms. They use their long tongues to catch quick prey. So I see right here that they're eating a beetle. They like to eat ants, spiders, worms. So this is something that sounds a little familiar to something we just read. Toads begin their lives as eggs in water. A group of eggs looks like a long chain. So this is all eggs. These are all toad eggs. And one of the differences between these eggs and the normal ones that we see is that they're like jelly. So they don't come in hard-shelled eggs like we talked about the birds and the um, reptiles do. They're kind of more like the fish uh, eggs that, are, that feel like jelly. Tadpoles hatch from the eggs. They have tails to swim. Gills help them breathe underwater. And what's another type of animal that has gills that helps them breathe underwater? The fish, right? Tadpoles change into adult toads. They grow legs and lungs. So this is something that they have in common with us, that they breathe using their lungs. Legs let toads hop on land. Lungs let them breathe air. Toads ooze poison from their skin when they face predators. It makes them taste bad. So here we see that this one, it, the snake, is trying to eat the toad. But if you see a little bit closer, and let's see if we can move in a little bit closer to them. This oil that it has around them is actually their poison. So this is making the snake think, oh, I'm eating something that's really, really nasty. I'm just going to want to spit it out. So this is a way that they defend themselves and then they can easily run away from the predator, which right now is the snake. They also puff up their bodies to look bigger. So this is something that they also have in common with one of the fish called the pufferfish. Remember that when they're 
scared or when they want to defend themselves, they blow themselves up to make them look like way bigger than what they really are. So here we have this picture where it's making itself look really, really tall compared to the snake. So now the snake is going to be like, oh, I don't want to mess with him. Let me go away. Toads even play dead to fool predators. Tricky toad. So this is something that they, that I found very interesting about toads is that if they feel like they're not going to be able to act quickly to build themselves up or to take their poison out, they just pretend, oh, I'm gone. You can't touch me because there's no point because I'm already gone. Alrighty, so those were a couple things that we learned about frogs and toads and I have a list here for us to go over about each of them. So one of the things that we read about frogs is that they need to live near water. They swim in the water, they use the water to keep themselves cool and to keep their body temperature going and most importantly to keep their skin looking smooth and feeling moisturized. They have smooth, moist skin that makes them look slimy. And they have a narrow body. That means that they're able to jump a little bit higher because they're not as heavy. They have higher and more bigger and round eyes than the toads. They also have longer back legs. So this is what they push on to jump higher. They like they take long high jumps. So this is that's one of the biggest things about using their legs that helps them. And they have a lot of enemies. Remember that we talked about that earlier. A group of frogs is called an army. So kind of like we know the army, it's a group of people. Frogs, a group of frogs is also called an army. Now for toes is that they don't need to live near water to survive because their skin is really, really dry and really, really rough anyway. So they don't need that water to go into and to come out of to keep their water, their skin moist. They have rough, dry, and bumpy skin. They have a wider butt body. Remember that the word plump also means wide. They have lower football-shaped eyes. So you can kind of see it right here in their eyes. The frog has like a circle kind of um, style. The toad has more like an oval or like a football shape. They have shorter, less powerful back legs or hind legs. Those, that means the back. So they're not able to jump as high as the frogs. They can run or they would rather run and take small jumps rather than a big jump. Like they, they'll rather hop than jump. Um, they don't have many predators because of the taste of their skin. And remember that that's, that's what makes it defend, its, defend themselves. And it, it makes it taste nasty and just gross for the predators that just, they won't want them. And finally, a group of toads is called a knot. Okay, so I have a couple of pictures here that I wanted to share with y'all that will help us kind of see the differences between them. So this one is an Argentine horned frog. So we can kind of see, okay, their legs are kind of bent in. They have rounder eyes. They have spots on their back of them. Okay, then we have the yellow band poison dart frog also has spots also has really long legs okay then we have the red eyed tree frog look at those legs that's one of the biggest biggest giveaways about the frogs is how long their legs are and if you see a little bit closer in his hand these little rounded things it's their sticky pads that help them keep on the tree so that's why it's this one's called a tree frog we have the Goliath frog, and Goliath kind of just means that it's big. It's bigger than normal frogs, but it's still considered a frog, especially considering the shape of their eyes, the length of their legs, and their hands, how big they are to help them stick on to the tree and the plants. Finally, we have the Oriental fire-bellied toad. So here we know that this is a toad. Their hands are a little bit smaller, 
because they don't have the need of holding on to the tree. Their eyes are a little bit more oval shaped. They're not as round as the other ones, not as big. And the back of their back legs aren't that long either because they don't need to jump like the frogs do. So using all of the information that we've collected, I want you to compare frogs and toads. Now, one of the things that I want you to focus on, think back on the things that we learned in the book. Think back on the list. What are, let's say, now, for today's dojo activity, you will be comparing frogs and toads using a Venn diagram. I want you to think about the things that we read in the books, the things that are on the list, and the physical features of it so you can fill up your Venn diagram. So remember, we're going to make one side only for frogs, one side only for toads, and the middle is going to be for both frogs and toads. Now, one of the things that I wanted to mention is the last time that we compared, we had a couple of like maybe two things here, two things there, maybe one thing in the middle. I want you to really, really use everything that uh, all of the information that you received today and try to put as many things that you know about frogs now and as many things that you know about toads and talk about the things that they have that are similar, that are the same, okay? So good luck with that and I hope you guys have enjoyed this lesson. I look forward to seeing you compare frogs and toads and with that I leave you and say See you tomorrow. Nos vemos mañana.